The archive feature allows you to move items that you choose, like messages, tasks, contacts, and notes, into another location. In other words, you're trying to free up some space. For example, let's say you're connected to the Exchange server and your IT person has set a size limit on your inbox and he wants you to delete some of the items in there so they have more server space. Well, instead of deleting them, if you want to hang on to them, you can archive them. Once they're archived, you can still pull them back in, and I'll show you how to import them, or you can view them from the archive file. Now, if you're not connected to an Exchange server, you still may want to archive your items, let's say anything older than 60 days, so you can keep the most recent items in here and not be cluttered with these older items. Now, keep in mind, you can still go through your archives later if you want to take a look at those older items. Now, you can archive your items either manually or automatically. First of all, let me show you how to do it manually. Go ahead and select the folder that you would like to archive, and then come up here and click on the File menu. Go down to Archive, and then notice by default the inbox is selected because we had it selected before we came to this screen. It wants to archive this folder and any of its subfolders. If the inbox did have a subfolder, you'd see a little plus sign here. Now, by default, it wants to archive any items that are older than 90 days. Today is June 12th, so it's about 90 days. Of course, I can change that and say, let's bring it closer to today's date, like June 1st. And then where's the file going to be dumped? Well, there's the address. Go ahead and click on the Browse button. And as you recall in the previous training videos, we created additional PST files, like for storage, or when we can't connect to the Exchange server, we have an offline PST that allows us to work in Outlook. And then there's the archive uh, file. Now, if you don't have the archive file here, it may be the first time you're doing this. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that the file name says archive.pst and not archive1, archive2, because the problem you may run into is if you're messing around with this and it's creating all these archive files, good luck in trying to organize all that and import everything back into these 20 or 30 archive files. Just focus on the simple archive.pst. Again, if it's not there, just make sure the name is here and click OK. When you're finished, go ahead and click OK. And then down below, you can see that it's archiving. It's taking any messages here that are older than the date and dumping them over here in the PST file. Let me expand it. And notice here, it's got the inbox, a copy of what I just archived from. So that way, I know that the items that are in this folder here are coming from the inbox. Let's go to the inbox in the archives. And there are the messages that are archived. Cool. Now that's one way if you want to do it manually. If you want to have it automatically done for you, you can come up here and click on the Tools menu, go down to Options, come to the other tab and click on the Auto Archive button. And here's the default. It's going to automatically run this every 14 days. And it's going to clean out items that are six months or older. You can, uh, of course, change that to days or weeks. And it's going to dump it to the same file here, the Archive. Now, just because it's going to run automatically doesn't mean that it's going to run on any one of these folders. Let me show you what I mean. Because these folders could be set up to not run at all. Let me click Cancel, click Cancel. We'll go ahead and right-click on the Inbox and go down to Properties. Up here on its Auto Archive tab, you can see that this folder isn't going to run at all. You've got two other choices. You can select the Archive Items using the default settings, which as you recall, the default settings, when I click on the button here, is that screen that we were just looking at. Again, to run every 14 days. Or, instead of using the defaults, you can say, well, for this particular folder, I want to clean out any items that are older than, well, 12 days or 11 days. So you have to turn the folder on by right-clicking and going to the Properties to the Auto Archive tab and choosing one of these two here. I prefer using the uh, default settings and then clicking OK. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and click Cancel. So you can either do it automatically or do it manually. Now, if you want to be able to take these items and move them back into their original folder, you can do it one of two ways. You can either click and drag it, put it back in the inbox, or let me hit Edit to undo that move. Or you can go from the File menu and go down to Import, Slash Export, and import them that way. Now, if you choose to do it that way, you have to close out of your archive folders by right-clicking on them and going down to Close. Now, the reason why is because when it comes to importing, it's going to say that your archive folder is busy. In other words, it's being displayed here. Now, if you closed out of it accidentally and you want to see it again, you can go File to Open to your data file and then double-click on Archive and, of course, you can view them here. Again, I want to close out of it so I can show you how to import it the long way especially if you've got tons of different folders that have been archived. You don't want to select every folder within that archive and then click and drag, click and drag. This would be a lot quicker to come up here and go File, 
down to import and export and go to Outlook. We don't want to use the business contact manager for Outlook, but Outlook. The default is to import from another program or file. Go ahead and click Next. Remember, let me scroll down, it was a PST file or personal folder file. And again, these are extensions. If you can't see the extensions in your Windows Vista operating system, then you want to watch my Windows Vista training video. Go ahead and click Next. Then I'll say what file do you want to import. Go ahead and click Browse. Double click and select your archive. And then down below choose one of the three options. If you import from the archive file, do you want to replace any duplicates? Now this might be a little bit tricky if you don't want to overwrite duplicates. Instead, you could use allow duplicates to be created. So you have like two contacts of the same name and then choose which one you want to keep. Or just don't mess with it at all and say don't import anything that's going to be a duplicate. And then click next. It says select the folder that you want to import from. If I just leave it alone, it'll import all the folders. Or I can click on the drop down arrow and say just import the inbox. And then it says import items into the same folder in the business contact manager. No. We want it to be my mailbox folder here. Then go ahead and click finish. Go back to my inbox and it should have imported those email messages. Let's go ahead and go file to open and let's open up our archive file by clicking on the Outlook data file. Double click archive. It pulls up. Let me expand the uh, folder here. Go down to the inbox. And you can see that it left the archives there, but it imported a copy of them. So if I go back to my inbox, both these two should be sitting in the inbox, and they're right there. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.